That was pretty good. Um, let me exit out of that. All right. So it's been a fun couple of three weeks at work, so I didn't get to really put together a presentation. But what I'd like to do is kind of walk through the new website and show you all of the things that you can do and and uh, get information on with the parks on the air. So let's scroll back to, I believe it was 2016, where the National Parks on the Air was born. A um, couple of guys from the ARRL decided to put together a program called National Parks on the Air. And it was activating, I forget how many national parks there were, but um, it was a fun little contest during 2016. I think I activated like 10 or so national parks and na uh, parks on the air was kind of born out of that. Um, there is a uh, WWFF uh, um, uh, program, Worldwide Floor and Fanta uh, program that uses the same park numbers. Actually, I think the, the parks on the air in the United States, and uh, now it's kind of international, has uh, uh, more park numbers. But um, I think that what happened, I don't know the full story, but I think they had a little disagreement on how to submit logs and, and uh, um, some other things. So they broke apart a group of guys and women broke apart and created the parks on the air and they have created a website and I'm not going to really get into how to activate a park or how to chase a park. Um, if you go over to the old YouTube, there are in search for parks on the air. There are probably dozens of videos on people activating parks on the air park to uh, POTA 101 what is a poto parks on the air? You could basically probably spend a whole weekend just looking at all of the YouTube videos on how to activate and how to hunt the people that are activating a poto site. So people who go to a park and set the radio down and actually are in the four walls of a park and they call CQ and give their park number, they are activators. They, you have to have 10 contacts in order for the park to be activated. And an activator would call CQ, gather the 10 contacts or 100 contacts or 1,000 contacts or however many contacts, put them in the log, and then submit that log to a parks on the air coordinator for your area and they would upload those log files. And I'll show you some um, uh, how, to, how to do that. But they'd submit the log. And then the people that he contacted or she contacted in the park, they would get credit for hunting that park. And the activator would get credit for activating that park. Hunters, on the other hand, the people that are outside of the park limits, contacting the person that is activating the park, they do not have to submit a log. So only the activator needs to submit a log in Parks on the Air. If you're familiar with SOTA, both the hunter and the activator have to submit logs in order to obtain those points to become either a shack sloth or a mountain goat. Well, in parks in the air, it's a little different. Only the activator submits their log. The hunter can sit in their shack and hunt parks all day and all night and not submit a log. And as long as you just kind of, I, I keep a notepad of all of the, the uh, parks that I have hunted. So therefore, whenever the activator actually uploads the logs, I can check, check that one off and say, yep, I got credit for it. So, and again, you can go out there and take a look at the YouTube page. Um, and also there's some Facebook pages out there too that uh, kind of showcase the activation and the hunting aspect of it. I'm going to concentrate here on the 
new and improved website that came out a couple of months ago. The old website was parksontheair.com and that still exists. So spelling out all of the words parksontheair.com, that site still exists. The new site is poda.app. So it is a new, new and improved website. And maybe if you got two screens, you can pull up poda.app on one side and in this presentation here on the other side. So this is the homepage that you're going to see whenever you go to poda.app. It's basically the spotting page. So whenever an activator goes out and activates a park, they're hopefully spotted on this page. And we'll get into um, some of the things that uh, the, the information you can glean from these spots. If you wanna get at, um, into Parks on the Air, and if you haven't gotten into Parks on the Air, I'm sure that you probably just spun the VFO dial and have heard somebody called CQ Poda, CQ Poda on CW, on digital, and on single sideband. It's all the rage. It's all the kids are doing it. So all the cool kids are, are doing parks in the air. Um, it's kind of like FT8. So it's a really cool program to, to get involved in. Um, there's awards and uh, there's a ton of awards and there's uh, different operating plaque events where they give plaques for most hunted, you know, different uh, categories in the parks in the air. But the first thing you probably want to do is you want to get an account. So I'm going to sign out of my account here. So this is what it's going to look like when you first go to this page. You're going to get a sign up or a sign in. So if you go over here to sign up, I believe that, um, yeah, you're going to have to go and create an account. So I already have an account. You can probably, you know, figure out, all right, you got to agree to the rules, the code of conduct. You got to review some stuff, complete the sign up. Your typical stuff, right? You sign up for an account, it sends you an email, you validate your email, you sign back in, you're in. So I'm going to sign in. So this is the sign in. I just put my email address and my password in here and click the sign in. Goes to, goes back to the spotting page. This spotting page changes every 60 seconds. They are working on not doing this because it's a little annoying whenever you're you're trying to to work stations but um you can see up here you've got the active spots and this data will, ref will refresh in now it's 33 seconds okay these again are all the spots so you can see here aa4rf randy McAllister. He's got a profile. If you hover over his profile, you can see some things about him. He's got uh, some activations, some unique parks, 23,000 QSOs, uh, 400 or 647 unique parks um, as a hunter. So he's pretty active. Um, and he is at K4526. And we'll get, we'll look into the map and I'll show you um, uh, what the park numbers are and how you can find parks around your, your house and your area. But cave uh, 4526, that's George Washington and Jefferson National Forest. So if you click on that link, it's going to show you everything about that park. So the, this is the stats of that park. So you've got the reference, you've got the location. Keep in mind that many parks are in multiple states. One of the biggest parks, quote unquote parks, is the Appalachian Trail that extends over, I think, 14 states. So um, and it will have all of the states here that that park is located in. Whenever that activator is calling CQ, hopefully at the end or in the middle of their their activation, they are telling you what state if it's not obvious what state they are in <clears throat> so if, if you are looking for you know worked all states for your your hunter award that you can mark that down as worked all states latitude and longitude i think that's just basically a designator on where they act or they uh, put the center of the park uh, dxcc entity of course it's going to be united states but parks in the air now is international 
And there are parks in Japan. There are parks in, um, in Europe. There's parks in South America. So it has expanded into different countries. So you um, might, you know, I saw that there was some Japan, some JAs spotted here on Parks in the Air. Park URL, if it has one, uh, a lot of the parks that get loaded, the original ones have URLs like the national parks and the ones that have been loaded recently. And I, I think about every four or five months, they do a dump of new parks into the system as new parks come online or parks got missed during the initial uh, loads, they get reloaded into the, into the system. Is it active? I'm assuming that there are probably uh, some inactive parks. First, first activation, uh, KB1HQS. I don't know if you know this guy. He, uh, Stuart, from, um, he has uh, written a book, an ARL book on portable operating. So uh, you can take a look. That's one of the acclimates that you can get is the first activator for a park. And then some stats about the park. It's been uh, 232 activations on 246 attempts. So it looks like that some people have attempted to activate this park and uploaded a log, but did not have the 10 contacts to call it an activation. Then you've got some park leaders. Uh, AA4RF is leading the pack with 133 activations. So it looks like this might be one of his close home parks and you can see the top five people that have activated the park again activator QSOs so AA4RF is leading the pack with uh, 6,454 QSOs as an activator and then hunted QSOs uh, in for HID has contacted at least 70 people that have activated this park so here's some stats that uh, kind of give you the top five for that park. And then you can see all of the recent activations. You have AA4RF has, has uh, really put some contacts in the log here. So it was activated on the 7th, on the 6th, a couple of times, three times on the 6th, on the 5th floor. So it looks like this is a pretty active park that people are going to and setting up radio and, and playing, playing POTA. Let's go back to uh, spots. All right. So this spot here, it shows what state it's in, shows the frequency and the mode. So you can see uh, AA4RF is on 80 meter FT8. And uh, he was spotted by KM3T looks like he was uh, spotted via the, the reverse beacon network. And you can see some of these are uh, reverse beacon networks. Some of these are manual spots. So then the nice thing about activating a park for CW is you get spotted. If you, um, if you make a, um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? If you, if you make a, um, a, uh, an activation public and um, you schedule an activation and you say that I'm going to be on 20 meters and 40 meters and 80 meters. If you call CQ on the reverse beacon network, it's going to pick you up and it's automatically going to put you on the spots page. So that is a nice feature uh, to schedule an activation and then get spotted via CW or FT8 or digital on the main spots page. And then last heard a minute ago, so as people respot, you know, let's say I worked uh, worked this guy AA4RF, and I wanted to respot him, I'd hit the respot here, and I would automatically respot him in the uh, the cluster here. And then you've got a little history on all the people that have heard him on the reverse beacon network, or have spotted him manually. Okay, any questions so far? Kind of doing a. If you guys have questions, just interrupt me and. Kyle. Yeah. Is there any restrictions for the activator in terms of the physical location of the station? Like, must he be a portable in his backpack 
or can he have a mobile station in a vehicle? Yeah, good question, Carlos. So the rules say that you have to be within the boundaries of the park. Doesn't matter if you're in your car, if you have an antenna that's sticking out of your backpack, um, or if you're portable, you just cannot be, let's say you live within the boundaries of a state park. You know, your house is actually in a state park. You cannot activate from your house. You need to be portable. Like if you pulled your KX3 and operated in your driveway, that would, that would count. But if you went back into your base station and kicked up your amplifier to a thousand watts and pointed your beam east, that would not count. Okay. Yep. That's a good question. There's a, uh, I know a couple of people that live in the state park at Quiver River State Park up in Troy, where I was born and raised. And um, if they wanted to activate Quiver River State Park, they wouldn't be able to. So then, yeah, as you scroll down, you can see some of these. This is a new feature. Um, the ones that have gray have been grayed out. They have put a comment here of you know QRT. So it picks this up and says this person's QRT. So they're not, they're not transmitting anymore. Up here on the top, you can see that there are some filters that you can use. So if you scroll down and hit the down arrow button, you can see that there's one person on 160 meters, three people on 80 and 75, one person on 40 and one person on 15. We're getting kind of late in the night, so all the activators are probably going home or uh, doing something else. So a lot, of, not a lot of stations, but any on a Saturday, you could easily find 50 to 60 people spotted on the Parks on the Air website. It is, it's pretty crazy. You can filter by mode, you can filter by program. So here's a, here's a JA. Uh, San Ru Fuko National Park. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Who knows? But you can hunt the North American or that is all. So I'm showing anybody that's QRT. If you want to hide them, then that uh, removes the people that are QRT. And as you hunt these stations, you can come in here and you can click this box and say that you've hunted that station. That will be remembered in your profile and you can say, show me everything that I've hunted or hide everything that I've hunted. So therefore, as you get a database of um, hunted parks, you can just say, I just wanna see the spots of the parks that I have not hunted Therefore, whenever I make that QSO, I know that I'm getting a park that is unique to me. And then you can sort by time, activator, frequency, mode, reference, park name, region, or spotter. So I'm going to go back to show. So anything on the spots page? Any questions on the spots page? I'm not looking at the chat here. I should probably look at the chat. It's well done. <laughs> Yeah, it is a very cool website. They um, they totally redid this. And on the back end, there is an API that shoots out some, um, some JSON. So you can pull these spots and pull them into any application you want. But it is, it's pretty, pretty slick. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm surprised you're not doing that with Node Red. Well, I am. I am, Phil. Oh, okay. <laughs> I am. I'm pulling all this stuff into Node Red in some capacity. Um, Bill, no, 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 no. John says, does activators commonly upload logs to Logbook of the World? I don't know. Um, here's the problem with Logbook of the World that I see is making a new location. Let's say I go to you know, a new location and I've got 
I don't have that location in my logbook to the world. So then I have to go and make a new location, wait for that to be updated, and then upload those logs as a new location other than my home QTH. Kind of a pain in the butt, but doesn't mean that it's not being done. Um, I don't know how to answer that question on, I guess it's up to the individual, but I would say that um, if people are into logbook of the world and using those as, as contacts that they want to confirm, I would say yes. Oh, and Chuck says, yeah, many do. Okay, good, good. Kyle, does, yeah. this, does this include city parks and county parks? No, that's another good question, Harry. It does not include city parks, county parks, privately owned parks. This is state parks, conservation areas, fish and wildlife, game areas, national parks. Um, oh, I forget some of the others, but city parks and county parks and privately owned parks are not part of the parks on the air system. That's a shame. Well, there is a lot of parks. I, I Let's get to the map and I will show you all of the, the parks around St. Louis. And I think you'd be surprised on how many parks there are in the system. I think that there are over um, 8,500 parks, I believe, in North America alone. So, all right. So we went over the, the spotting. So let's just kind of run through some of the... Um, Oh, let, let's let's add a spot here. So let's say my buddy um, Phil K0PWS was on the air and he gave me a text message and says, hey, can you spot me? Sure, I could spot you. So maybe he's on 14.200, our, our favorite frequency. And um, he's at uh, K1234. Uh, and... Um, I'm going to put in here um, uh, running on KX3 with N fed. So I could hit the spot button and, uh, oh, I got to put this in kilohertz. So you can see real fast, anything that is in red is going to, is going to tell you poo-poo and you got to redo it. So that spot is ready to go. And you can get to this on your phone. It's very easy to spot via on your phone, but then also you can obviously spot through the computer here. Here's where you would add an activation. Let's say I want to go in K1234. I am going to start and remember all of this stuff is a new TC. I'm going to go out this weekend and I'm going to start at, let's say, um, at 11. UTC, and I'm going to be out there for a couple of hours. And I'm going to try and get on 14 or uh, 7200. And, um, you know, uh, working 20, 40, and 80. So this will put this in the scheduling portion of the website and then if the reverse beacon network <clears throat> psk reporter um ft8 picks you up it's automatically going to put your spot on the home page single sideband uh you'll have to have somebody spot you because it's uh, obviously our voice recognition our google and alexa isn't uh, isn't good enough to figure out single sideband and who, uh, who's calling CQ. So, so that's spots and activation. Um, let's see here are, if you click on activation. So I just went up here to the, to the hamburger menu. So if anybody, you can quiz your, your, uh, your spouses here and, uh, your significant others, this three, three, um, horizontal lines is called a hamburger menu and you go down to activations. And here are all of the schedule activations that are happening 
you can schedule these. I think it's six months out. You can, you can schedule activations. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but so you can see all of the activations that are happening um, in the next, oh, this goes about two, three weeks, two weeks, three weeks. Okay. So if you need to change your frequency, cause you know, you specified a frequency that's in use, is that pretty dynamic? Uh, you could do that just before or at activation time or? Yeah. So Phil, the, if you're, if the reverse beacon network spot spots you and picks you up, it's just going to spot you on the frequency that you're calling CQ on. Oh, okay. Well then that works yeah. out. Then, yeah. then there'll be spots for where you really are. Right. Right. Single sideband. You can put it in here, but someone's going to have to come in and actually manually spot you on the frequency that you're calling CQ on. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So, so okay. people pay more attention to the spots than they do that reservation. Yeah, exactly. Right. I, I never look at the reservations. I just, you know, I'm bored at home. I kick on the radio. I pull the spots up and I take 45 minutes and I run through the bands and pick out what I can hear and what I can't hear. Yep. Thanks. Yep. All right. So here's the map. And Harry, here's a, uh, you can see granite. We're scrolling out to here's Columbia, Missouri over here, St. Louis, and obviously Illinois. But you can see there's quite a bit of Poda parks that participate in the program in and around St. Louis. There's no way of marking these, the ones that you have done or activated and the ones that you haven't activated or the ones that you have hunted. So you kind of have to just have a notebook and some, some paper and do it manually or put it in a spreadsheet. I've got mine in a Google spreadsheet that I keep track of. But let's say, let's go down here to the Arch, which is a national park site. And uh, a little, a little uh, knowledge about the Arch. If you're actually going to be on the Arch grounds, you have to have a permit um, to activate the Arch. So don't go down there and just string up an antenna. I'm sure the park rangers are probably going to come down there and tell you to take it down. Um, but a lot of people, what they have done is they have uh, gotten their car and parked along these streets here and activated the arch, um, which I, I guess it's okay. But if you're going to go portable on the arch site, uh, you need to get a permit from the, uh, the national park system. That's another thing that you probably need to do is before you go to a park, I know that's a pain in the butt, but kind of get familiar on if you can string antennas in the trees, if the, if you can't, there's a ton of of self-supporting mass systems that just stake in the ground that would probably be a good uh, way to activate and put an antenna up and end fed um, to activate a park. So uh, I try and keep as many things out of the trees as possible and kind of be self-sustaining uh, and uh, self-supporting whenever I go and activate. So if you click on the little yellow button here, It'll give you the name of the park, Gateway Arch National Park, which I don't think is the real name. I think it's the Jefferson Memorial Expansion. Or maybe I'm wrong on that. I'm really sure. But anyway, K0779 is the park number. And then you can click on more info. And here it gives that screen that we had seen um, before. So... Uh, again, more of this stuff on the left-hand side is filled out. You can see that uh, the park URL is filled out. The first activation was uh, WA2 USA back in 2016. So they keep records for, they imported some of the records for national parks on the air. And uh, if you take a look at the activations in D9E, Scott over in uh, Maryland, Maryville, He's activated it twice. And uh, you can see some of the, the recent activations here um, that have activated. I'm sure that if you go back far enough, maybe I am in here. Nope, I'm not in here. Oh, well. I thought that I activated this and they had me in there. Oh, well. Um, so 
I guess they didn't put in the national parks on the air for, for myself, but more stats on the park. So all the yellow dots are parks that are Correct. on the internet. Correct. I noticed right. that there's one down in uh, South County area. Yeah. You want this one here or you want this one down in Peevely? Well, the one that's, I guess, well, there's one in Peevely and then there's one west of that also. Yeah. So there is, this one's a cool park. This one is uh, uh, Governor Daniel Duncan's gravesite. This one's a really cool, I've activated this park down here and it's a really cool place and it's, it's very secluded. And it's at the end of this cul-de-sac here. And actually, it's not even a cul-de-sac. It's uh, I wish I could turn on the, the satellite. But anyway, it's uh, the the grave site is actually down here on on the bluff. You can see that uh, the um, um, the map here, uh, 150 meters above sea level, and then it drops all the way down to the river and that the grave site is actually right here. And it's a really cool site to activate. You won't get anybody that actually comes and says, hey, what are you doing? Um, so it's a really cool, neat place to, to hang out for the afternoon and activate. The, the one over here, Harry, is Sandy Creek Covered Bridge. I've activated this one. Yeah, Here's, here I am with one activation. And um, let's see. I think There's I one at Grant's one. Farm. That's surprising. Yeah. Grant's farm is a, well, oh. it's, it's you, it's the Ulysses uh, Grant tomb. Cabin or tomb. Yeah. I'm surprised they don't have Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery. <laughs> yeah. Well, cemeteries are off limits because they don't oh. want people tramping in there and hanging wires from well, tombstones. Even, even Jefferson Barracks. Park oh yeah. Silver right. Springs Park. And this one down here, Harry, I think it's, um, is it? Is it Mast on 50, off of 55 there? Mastodon, yeah, state historic site. Yeah. Yep. So if you go to the map, you can see all of the locations that, that uh, have places that you can go and, and activate. Just... Uh, the, the, the best advice I can give is um, if you go learn where the boundaries of the park are, right? And, um, you know, go and find a picnic bench. Google, Google Maps with the satellite view is your friend. You can hone a ton of stuff from, from what you need to do to activate that park, where you're going to set up. Um, Again, I, I've done a video on my YouTube channel on activating portable sites and some tips and tricks on what tools you can do while sitting in the, your chair at home. You can gather before you actually even end up in the park trying to figure out where you're going to activate from. So, so uh, are you doing mostly CW or are you with a KX3 or are you doing 891 or what are you taking out? So, I mostly, uh, if I, if I don't have to walk far, I'll take the 891 and an NFED. If I have to huff it and um, walk quite a ways, I'll take the KX3 and take like a, either an NFED if I can throw something up in the tree, or I've got a Buddy Stick Pro with a tripod that I'll, I'll throw in my, in my backpack and go and activate that way. Um, yeah. I am, you know, I'm a relatively new CW operator, so um, I can run about 18 or 20 words a minute in short blasts. And uh, Parks on the Air is great because once I get about three words in, my brain starts to go to mush. And um, I'm good for the call sign, the uh, the good morning, the 599, the, the state, and 73, and I'm out of there. So um, I'm about probably, I want to say, 75 25 single sideband and cw uh, if if i'm calling cq and i'm getting I, I you know let's say i got 30 minutes to activate a park I get 15 minutes in and i'm at i'm at four four or uh four contacts you better bet your your b-hole that i'm switching over to cw <laughs> 
Kyle, do you, are you using computer logging or paper logging? Yeah, I have gone back and forth, Udo, on that. And um, so there is a new, a new logging program. It's called um, Hammers, H-A-M-E-R-S, or R-S. And again, this is all the rage. H-A-M-R-S. It is on Apple, Google, Amazon, Mac OS, Windows, Ubuntu. You can run it on a Raspberry Pi. It is parks on the air centric. And there are a few bugs. There, it is only developed by one person, Jared. And, uh, but he has made a bunch of strides to make this one of the best loggers for parks in the air. The nice thing about hammers is you enter all your stuff on the computer or on your phone, and then you hit the export button and you can literally export that to a file and upload it to your park administrator literally before you leave the park. But I do use paper. I have used paper in the past. And um, whenever you use paper and uploading those logs manually with times, you know, um, UTC times, it's a pain in the butt. You've got to input it into a certain format. You do. Upload it. Okay. Yep. You got to, you got to upload it in an ADIF file format and you have to put some special um, attributes in there to make sure that the park number that you're activating is, is in there. So they know what park you're activating. Yep. Okay. So that's the park. Uh, the park list here does not work. I don't know why, but uh, it never, maybe you're hot. You'll have better luck with than me. I'm pulling this up. Top activators again, just, uh, stats. Um, dashboards of all time you can go back throughout the years and figure out who is the top activator top hunters same thing dashboard stats on all of the things that uh, are all of the uh, the stats for the top hunters frequently asked questions here we go so this is a good place to start out just to learn about parks on the air and what to do what not to do this is a good reference on how to, this is probably one of the ones that you'll probably use the most. How do I set my logs in? Well, go to the home page, and it's based on your call sign, not your location. If your call sign has a zero, which most of us do here, you'll send it to k0 at parksontheair.com. So you'd up, so you'd you'd export your ADF ADIF file, attach it to an email, touch it to an email that is addressed to K0 at parksontheair.com or K9 or KH or um, uh, your call sign number. So, Carlos, you would send it to K5. Um, and then that's how it's uploaded. In the future, they're going to get to a point where individual users can upload their log, but they haven't got there yet. There is also a format that you need to put the, um, uh, the file name in, and I'm not seeing it here, and I'm not really sure why they don't have it here, but you'll want to want to make sure that you, you uh, put the file name in the format that they are wanting it so it gets uploaded to the server. It is basically your call sign at and then your park number, and then another dash, and then the date, uh, year, month, day. There's a lot of YouTube videos on how to do that. Uh, rules and conduct, I'm sure that you probably can figure out what the rules and conduct are. Um, community resources. So we've got POTA activator course, a PDF. You'll probably want to download this activator guide or this hunter guide <clears throat> it's got some good information remember hunters don't have to submit calls um, log log files activators do and they've also got a slack 
and they've got a Facebook page. So this is their Facebook page here, and it's very active. I bet you there's probably five or six posts a day on people activating or put uh, submitting pictures on things that they have, uh, or parks that they have activated. They have some official events. So the, la the last one was Autumn Support Your Parks Weekend. So that's the, full, the third full weekend in October. It was the weekend of Illinois CUSO Party. But the big one is the Summer Support Your Parks, the third full weekend in July. That is the annual plaque event. And that's where they have different awards and different plaques that you can earn for top stats. Some, some guy activated 53 parks in the mat, in the matter of 48 hours. So, um, he, uh, he obviously won the, the, um, most activated parks in the weekend. And then here's the plaque events and some stats from last summer. So that's the third weekend in July. So then you can come down here to my awards. So here is the different awards that I have, quote unquote, one. It's just certificates, and I can download this as a PDF and send this off. But you've got bronze activator working from 10 different units, kilo, more than 1,000 QSOs from the same ent entity as an activator. So they've got, they've got hundreds of awards that you can put beside your, in your, um, your page to display how well or how active you're doing. And then here is my activated US state. So I've acted, activated parks in Alabama, DC, Illinois, Missouri, North Carolina. And then here is my hunted states. Still got Arkansas or uh, Alaska, Missouri. Huh, <laughs> I don't have anybody from Missouri. How about that? Um, Nebraska, Hawaii, uh, New Hampshire, Idaho, Louisiana, South Dakota. I really don't take a look at most of this stuff. It's just like, if it comes, it comes. Um, so then some other stats here. So a lot of, a lot of camaraderie and um, poking fun at uh, your friends on, on different stats. So here is some other stats here on, you know, like uh, all the bands that I've worked and all the contacts, the different modes. And, uh, yeah. And then my activations. So here are all the parks that I've activated. My latest one here was, uh, let's go to the Vietnam veterans that was down in, um, Washington, DC. I was down here on the national mall a couple of, about a month ago and activated the Vietnam's veteran Memorial talk about veterans day to day sat uh sat right over here and activated the uh the memorial in washington dc so just a list of all the parks that you have activated and you can sort by date range then my log book is uh this is going to take a minute but uh, this is all of your logs so not only whenever you upload them you can actually look at them also some of the places that you upload you can't look at uh, your logbook again and then my accounts this is where you change your avatar change your personal info and um, this would have some of your call signs so the one thing about activations is you can activate under a club call sign but also get credit as an activator as yourself so therefore the club gets credit for it and you get active activation credit for it also kyle do you have to uh do a slash uh, portable or a, let, let's say you're doing Illinois. Uh, would you have to do a, your call sign AE zero Z slash nine, for instance? You don't, you don't have to, I don't. Okay. No, I don't. Okay. Um, sign out, everyone knows how to sign out and this late shift mode. So there's a couple of different awards that people they're prestigious about the kilo award having over a thousand contacts in a park. That's pretty prestigious. And then also another one you can see from 
the spots page, there's not a lot of spots after uh, 00 UTC. So another prestigious award is the late shift mode. That's where um, you activate a part after 00 UTC. I believe it goes to 6 a.m. And they made a they made a uh, late, late shift mode um, theme out of the website um, for all the people that are in late shift mode. So that's where that come from. Table view. So either you can look at uh, the spots in table view or you can put them in card view and then uh, show user stats. Ah, so you can, uh, it looks like it turns an on and off the, uh, the avatar. I'm not really sure what the avatar, I never messed with the avatar. I think the avatar is something along the lines on you can make it, it shows how active you are. So, but the avatar is something that you don't change in parks on the air on that profile. You have to go to another system and change your avatar. I didn't understand that and I just didn't do anything with it. So, um, so yeah. So that is the Parks on the Air website and a little bit about the program. It's pretty much all that I had. Any questions about Parks on the Air or things that, uh, has anybody had some good experiences with Parks on the Air? I'm sure that you guys have probably hunted the Parks on the Air, but has anybody gone out and completed an activation? No? Yeah, I have, Kyle. Yeah? Yeah, I, I did some of it uh, during uh, Missouri QSO party. That was kind of fun, handing out all kinds of numbers and trying to keep it all straight and uh, and then figure out how to upload the logs and all that kind of stuff. It's fun. I'd like to do more of it. Uh, should I get the time? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, some people go gung ho with it. I We were up at uh, Union Ridge Conservation Area for Missouri Parks in the Air. And that is calling CQ POTA and CQ Missouri QSO party or state QSO party is one way to really boost your score. I mean, we probably contacted, I want to say it was over 50% of our contacts were just for people trying to hunt that park um, because mm -hmm. it was a pretty rare park. But um, yeah, you can parlay it into something else. and. Um, it is a really good program. The, the, the guys and the gals that are behind the website and the program and keep everything functioning on the back end, they, it's a really good group of people and it's a really good program. Um, it has spurred a lot of interest and gotten a lot of attention and have gotten you know people's uh, butts off the couch and actually in the, into the parks, enjoying nature and um, getting some QSOs put on the air, right? Yeah, I, th I think the uh, the neatest thing about it is that uh, people with modest capabilities, either for activating or for working from home, can really have a lot of fun with this program. DXing, which we're all familiar with, takes a little bit more horsepower to really be successful once you get past the the basic uh, basics of it, and um, a lot of people just simply don't have access to that either because of where they live or economic circumstances or whatever. And this is great. You can be a big gun in POTA um, with 100 watts and, um, you know, uh, just a, a vertical in your backyard or a portable antenna that you haul around in the car. It's easy. And um, it's really getting a lot of people on the air. They're active. They're interested. They're engaged in propagation. They may, you know, eventually get to be interested in DXing and more competitive events. But right now, anything that's OTA and it gets people OTC off the couch and OTA on the air is fine with me. Yeah. The, the nice thing about what I noticed is the parks on the air hunters are, you know, th th you're going to get lids anywhere you go on the bands, right? But the nice thing about you become the DX, right? And you're working the pileup and you learn how to work a pileup and it, then you really hone in your contest skills, right? And you, you, you know, 
you become the, you know, the guy on, on Christmas Island or the, the, the guy, you know, in the Canaries on CQ worldwide and everybody wants to contact that person. And uh, you get a little, a little bit of taste of that. And it, it makes you feel good after you spent an hour running through QSOS and you look down at your log and, you know, you've worked, you know, 50 stations in an hour and you're just like, this is what contesting is about. This is awesome. And, um, you're able to hone in your contest skills <clears throat> pretty quickly and not have it in a contest setting with the pressure on trying to put as many cues in the book and put your, put your butt in the seat and, uh, and make it all about rate. It's a lot like the uh, traffic system was for a lot of us when we were getting started, where you learned basic procedures and cue signals and how to copy and all that kind of stuff. So it's a sort of, I hesitate to call it an entry level program because uh, there's a lot of highly skilled people doing it. Um, but it's got an entry level door uh, for people just getting started. I'm just really pleased. Um, the world, uh, worldwide flora and fauna and soda summits on the air, in POTA and POTA, and of course, there's the original IOTA, and there's also the U.S. Islands program. Those are all uh, excellent programs and give people something to go out and work. What's wrong with that? Yep, yep. Kyle, I, I, yeah, I had, a couple, had a couple comments. Uh, yeah, I just recently got interested in uh, POTA and, and uh, enjoy it very much. Uh, one of the things, uh, you know, Ward mentioned uh, DXing. Uh, uh, sometimes it's uh, it's difficult to dig out those those POTA stations on the air. So you have to use your listening skills. You you got to use APF filter on CW and everything just to to pull those guys in. But it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the other thing I mentioned or want to mention is. Um, I haven't done any activations for a long time, but I did a couple of activations in the uh, national parks uh, on the air program in 2016. Yep. And uh, I discovered that uh, they they will accept old logs. So, so what I did was uh, I took my um, my logs from Yellowstone. I operated there for four or five days. Uh, in Yellowstone in the wintertime in 2016 and uh, made about 160 contacts and uh, so I uploaded my logs and and if you look up uh, uh, Yellowstone National Park you find out I was I'm, I'm the number one activator in terms of number of days or number of times I activating um, uh, and I think I was number three in terms of number of QSOs from, from uh, there. I was kind of surprised to see that. Uh, but I hope to get out uh, in some of the more local parks and, uh, and have some more fun activating. But uh, the chasing is also fun. Yeah. At, uh, tell you the truth, Chuck, I, didn't, I did not know that uh, they would accept old logs. So maybe I need to go and get my logs from the arch. When uh, Scott in D9E and I activated it in 2016, um, there's actually a um, QRZ on my QRZ page. Let me log in. There's, uh, let's see. Yep, there's, there's myself on oh, the yeah. arch grounds. Yeah, activating uh, the arch. So I need to go back and upload my my logs. Yeah, there I am. No0C, I think, was the guy I uh, contacted. He's very nice. He's real helpful and uh, good to work with. And I did, uh, yeah, the Grant National Historic Site also. So yeah, I'll have to go out and upload the um, the logs. I did not know that. That's a that's a good. Good tip there, Chuck. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You get some points to some of the people that uh, on their scores too. Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that. So I'll have to pull those out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
So, Kyle, if uh, you mentioned uh, you put up the infed a time or two, do you ever take your big shot uh, or do you run into issues uh, with park rangers or what? I the, the only time that I have not had an issue, but I was down at um, um, Babbler State Park and I had so I don't take my big shot out with me. I use a method. Um, so a big shot is one of those big, huge slingshots that you can launch, you know, away a football field. I've got one of those and we use those for Missouri CUSO party to get that loop, you know, 50 feet up in the air. Um, but what I do is I take a arborist throw line and I've got a sack and I push all of the arborist throw line into the sack and I've got a, a 12 uh, ounce weight. And if you go out on YouTube, there is a method where you actually act like it's a pendulum and you, you take, if you want to shoot your, your, your weight up in a tree, you stand with your back behind it and you, you spread your legs and put your pendulum and you put your weight. And then what you do is you get some momentum and then you fling it up over your head. And I bet you, you could probably get that thing 60 or 70 feet in the air. And that oh, is wow. the method that I use. If you, if you go out on YouTube and Google, um, arborist throw line techniques, that is okay. the way that I get my end fed all the way up to 40 or 50 feet, depending on, you know, if I got a 40, 40, uh, meter end fed, that things, you know, it's yeah. like 66 feet or 68 feet or something like that. Um, well, that's, that's an interesting technique. I, I, the only reason I ask is I was in down Orlando one time and, and uh, guys were talking about one of those, uh, not even the, the arborist version of the big shot, but just a slingshot to shoot yeah. fishing line. Yep. And they said they were in the, in a park and a, and a park ranger gave them a fine because yeah. a slingshot was considered like for hunting. Yeah. Um, Any, anything that can, uh, project uh, a project you know throw a projectile is no no good in most parks um and uh the i you know we used to hear a lot about you know take your compressed air spud gun out with yeah. you and stuff like that so it can get you arrested so don't do it oh yeah. wow yeah so that that's that's what i was asking that but but that yeah. technique you described doesn't sound like it would be a violation, right? I no, mean no, but what I do is is if I'm going to a park that potentially has a park ranger that I know is going to be roaming around like a big state park like Castlewood, Babbler, um, you know, the uh Governor Dunklin's grave, I, I I've activated that thing four or five times and I've never seen a soul. But um what I do is I call the park. And I ask them what their rule is and I tell them what I'm doing. And most bigger parks, if you tell them that you are an amateur radio operator and you're doing a program, participating in a program called Parks in the Air, I bet you seven out of 10 park rangers have already heard about that program. Interesting. So then you ask them what's their policy on putting ropes in trees and either they say yay or nay. And then what you do is you get that park ranger's name because whenever park ranger bill comes and says, Hey, you're not supposed to do that. You can say, well, park ranger Sally said that I could do this yeah. on this date and on this time. Yeah, that's good. But I have, I have only, we have run into, well, I've, I ran into park rangers at Babbler and they came over and said, what are you doing? And of course they say, are you contacting aliens? And then you say, the, the <laughs> obligatory yes i am do you want to come and talk to them and you know um then you you know have your 30 the um 30 second elevator speech on what what is parks in the air and what is amateur radio um but the 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 most issues that we've had was up at union ridge at missouri cuso party and the ranger the conservation agent comes over and says uh you guys aren't supposed to be camping here and was all this electronic equipment so then we have to pull out the permit and show them the permit that we are there for an amateur radio expo. And we are, we have, you know, the proper 
procedures and qualifications and this and that. And one guy said, well, I need to f- see your amateur radio license. I'm just like, oh, no. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so I had to get on the on the net and go to the FCC database and show him because I, I don't carry it in my wallet. Yeah. yeah I, so I, had to, I had to literally show him that I wasn't actually. But there were seven other people there. It's not like, you know, <laughs> not, but because I signed the permit, I, I had to have show him the amateur radio license. And then after I showed him the amateur radio license, he got in his car and drove away. So you're supposed to carry them on there. And <laughs> I'm just saying that's what that small parts for. I, I hear you. I, I knew I was going to get, I was going to get flack from the, uh, the VEs in the room. Um, <laughs> you can would... get your, uh, am, amateur radio license on the credit card size, uh, thing. And it's uh, done right here in, uh, the St. Louis area where somebody does that. And it was, uh, really inexpensive. Yeah. And I, and I got it pretty quick. I forget who I got it from. I've oh, got okay. one of those. That is good. That is a nice way to I do it. I guess that's nice, but I just, uh, laminated mine. Yeah. Well, you should, I should have learned my lesson, but I still don't carry it. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, that's the only run-ins that I had. I, okay. Yep. We have any more questions? No. That's very, very interesting, Kyle, about Thanks. the, uh, you know, that's, and really, hey, you're right in that, you know, you start chasing what, what came to mind when, when you were talking about these uh, parks on the air is the, uh, the county hunter situation yeah. where you're going for 3,061 or two, whatever the number is, you know, and you, and you sit there and you spend literally years doing that stuff to get an award that says here, you talk to everybody in the United States. Well, well um, I- uh, unlike unlike Dayton on Sunday, where they have the three guys stand up who have worked from and to every single county in America, I, th- there's not like uh, I guess it's the plaque event that uh, you get some recognition. But yeah, those three, <laughs> those three guys on Sunday afternoon that stand up on the county hunters that blows my mind. Well, the the ones that really should blow your mind are the ones that have done it nine times. Oh, there's and somebody going, that's done it nine times. Oh yes, oh yes. Oh, I only know the couple of guys that have done it like three times. No, there are people that have done it nine times. Oh, my God. That is, you know, what's the definition of insanity? Well, <laughs> <laughs> wow. doesn't take much, but really, no, but it's um, Fox Fox did it. What's that? Uh, More than once? I'm not sure. I think he did. Uh, that was... Uh, uh, uh no his brother silver was was uh big into that and he ran all over the place putting out counties but yeah be that as a jim glasscock yes 